Welcome to your Cordial Lesson of the Week. I told you some weeks ago that I would do a complete lesson on cadences. And here we are, I'm going to show you 10 cadences that you can use to end your musical phrases more creatively. The first cadence that you need to learn is the authentic perfect cadence. It is the most classical, most known way of uh, ending a musical phrase. And I'm going to play it in C major for all of the cadences we are going to study so we have the same bass. So basically it's to use the fifth degree of your scale and resolving back to the root. It's classic. So in C major it's G, C. Fifth degree, root chord. I could do it like this too. This is the most basic cadence. But now you can have also a imperfect authentic cadence. It means that it's still going to be the fifth degree resolving to the first, so the fifth to the root chord, but the root chord is going to be in an inverted version. So it doesn't sound as conclusive as the perfect authentic. So it's going to sound something like this. So because the C major is inverted, it's on its third. It doesn't sound as conclusive. So you can use the imperfect authentic cadence if you want a strong cadence but is that is not as conclusive because this one could pretty much end your song and you don't want to have all of your cadences in your song give the listener the impression that the song is going to end right so we have to use other types of cadences just to move forward and not have the impression that that's it the song has ended you know so the imperfect cadence is good for that you also have third position the half cadence so basically it's the opposite of the perfect or imperfect cadence instead of having the emphasis on the root chord we have we will place the emphasis on the fifth chord so we are going to play our chord sequence and stop the longest on the fifth chord. So we are going to stop on the chord that has the most tension, that really wants to resolve. So it's going to do something like this. So we spend more time on the fifth. So if I were to play the same progression but with a perfect authentic cadence, it would sound like this. So you see, I stop on the root chord. My home is my root chord, but with the half cadence, my home is the dominant chord, the fifth degree of my scale. So it's really, if you want to, have things less resolved and you really want to hear more when you play that type of cadence. Then you have in fourth position the plagal cadence like I said in uh, my uh, lesson about my band Mystery. So instead of having the dominant chord, you have the fourth chord. So you have the major type of play plagal cadence but you can have a minor type of play goal cadence. The major is uh, from far, far away in history, uh, especially in churches to do the amen. It's like, amen, something like this, okay? But the minor one is more recent. It's, it's uh, reminiscent of the Beatles. I have a whole lesson on the minor fourth chord if you want to learn more about that. 
So this is the minor plagal cadence. It's more used in pop music than classical music. What we've seen in the first position, the first one, the perfect, imperfect, half cadence, it's really from the classical background. Plagal cadences? As strong cadences, you don't really find that in classical music. It's more in pop music nowadays. Then you have the most interesting one to my eyes. It's the interrupted cadence. It's also called the deceptive cadence. So basically, we are going after our dominant chord. We are going anywhere but the root chord because what we expect is that the root chord is happening. expect the root chord after that, right? But we are going anywhere but that. The most classic way to do an interrupted cadence is to play the sixth degree instead of the root chord. So that would do something like this. <laughs> so you expect the root chord, but it's then in the sixth chord. So it gives momentum forward. You don't resolve too much and your song continues and it doesn't feel like it's going to end, right? So the sixth chord is the most effective for that, but you can use the fourth chord if you want to. Again, you want the root chord, but you get the fourth. So once again, the fourth one is really good to get things moving forward and your progression goes elsewhere. You don't have always the same type of cadence coming back and forth. That's why some people don't like classical music nowadays because it, there's too much of that five one five one five one all over the place for hundreds of times in the symphony so that's basically what you can do with the interrupted cadence you could go to any other degree of your scale or even outside of your scale but the most commons are the sixth and the fourth degree outside of your scale it could sound like this can go elsewhere with that if you pick a chord that is not inside of your scale that could work too the seventh type of cadence is the Picardi cadence so basically we are going to play in a minor scale so now we are going to use C minor and most of the time what we see is a G major because we still want the tension and resolution inside it in a regular or harmonization it's supposed to be a G minor but you don't have that same attraction. But with the Picardy cadence, we are going to play in minor, but we are going to play our root chord in major instead. Ah, it's in major instead. If you want to learn more about Picardy thirds, I have a lesson on that. The eighth cadence doesn't have a name, but I call it the action cadence because it's used everywhere in action music, video game music, just fun action music. And it's the flat six, flat seven, and one. It's basically the sixth degree, seventh degree, and first degree of a minor scale. So basically, if we stay in C minor, it's going to be A flat major, B flat major, and C minor. I 
could have so many examples for this type of cadence. Uh, recently, I have played my old Smash Bros game on my GameCube, and this uses this progression. The, the main music, it's like uh, something like... So it's it's basically it's the same it's flat six flat seven and root it's everywhere if you listen to Iron Maiden It's everywhere in metal music, rock music, pop music, movie, video game, whatever. It's really, really the best cadence. If you want an epic sound, fun and action kind of sound, you use the action type of cadence. I don't know if it has a real word, but I call it the action cadence. The ninth cadence is the Andalusian cadence, which is from the flamenco tradition. It's, a, it's in a minor scale. So it's basically the first degree, flat seven, flat six, and a major fifth degree. As I said earlier, in minor keys, it's really common to have a major fifth degree instead of a minor, which is the regular harmonization, but we want the tension and resolution. So you will recognize this one as the hit the road jack progression. It's not used only in flamenco and it hit the road jack, it could be used for many, many other types of songs, but it uh, originates from the flamenco tradition. There are many things that we can do with the Andalusian cadence, maybe I'm going to do a complete lesson just on that. And then the last cadence that I want to show you is the key change cadence for lack of a better word, it's to use your sus4 chord on the fifth degree of your scale for a very, very long time. Resolving it back to the regular fifth degree, and then from there, you can go anywhere you want. It's going to be surprising just for one second, and then we will understand that we just changed keys, and that's going to work every time, anywhere. So I've, as we've seen in my lesson showing the, re, the key change from my band Mystery that we use, we have the sus4 chord, Now I modulated from C major to D minor. I could do anything that I want. So now I modulated in F minor, which is really a part from C major. But it's just surprising, but it works every time because we put so much tension on the sus4 chord that we can just expect anything after it. It's uh, another great trick as the interruptive or deceptive cadence to just defy the expectations and go elsewhere and bring your song to uncharted territories. So it's not predictable that you're going to do For the whole song because we've heard that too many times and we want to be more creative. So there you have it, 10 different cadences that you can use to end your musical phrases more creatively. Of course, there are many other cadences existing, but I think those are the main ones that you want to explore. So I really recommend that you use especially the interruptive 
deceptive cadences so you want to make your song move forward and just defy the expectations of what the listener is expecting on a fifth dominant chord and just bring your song elsewhere try it in your next songs it's going to be very interesting if you like that lesson give it a big thumbs up if you want to learn more about ambient chords and how to organize them in sequences you can take my free mini course it's the first link on the description box or the orange pick here. As always, I really like teaching. Thanks for watching. Thank you very, very much. And until next time, au revoir.